Hello, today I will be talking about these. Good old buildings, skyscrapers, and landmarks. Almost mesmerizingly standing out among the flat, detailless skyscrapers of today's modern cities, it is hard to imagine our favorite cities without these marvels of engineering and craftsmanship. These buildings, despite being beautiful to look at most of the time, might not be standing today at all if it were not for the sacrifices of the Singer Building and the Pennsylvania Station. Before we get into that, I'd just like to say thank you for watching this video, as it is my first video for this channel, so make sure to subscribe if you would like to see more. Thanks! This is the grand and ornate Singer Building, once the tallest building in the world. It rested in New York City from 1900 until 1968, when it was heartlessly demolished to make way for the more modern One Liberty Plaza. The building is often labeled as once tallest standing, then tallest to come down, and the greatest failure in the early architectural preservation movement. The Singer Building was the tallest building in the world until 1909 when it was surpassed by the MetLife Tower. The building resembles a large roofed watchtower or wizard's tower with a sturdy base, slim mid portion, and domed roof. Right next to it was the City Investing Building, which suffered the same fate when the plot was raised. Today in their place stands an almost featureless black box that looms over the street below. Now I myself dislike international style architecture more than some people, which makes this even worse for me, but even international style fans surely have to admit that replacing such an iconic and beautiful building with something so uninspiring is kind of insulting. This is the architectural masterpiece that was the Pennsylvania Station, or Penn Station, in New York. It was once the most grand train station in all of America. It was built in 1909 and was controversially demolished in 1963 to make way for the Madison Square Garden and to Penn Plaza. The station was constructed in a massive plot with wide entrances, a lofty central hall, and the most incredible part, in my opinion, the airy glasshouse section, with stairs leading down to the tracks. Unfortunately, over time, the station was starting to fall into a state of neglect, with its pink granite walls becoming gray with soot, its windows becoming nicotine-stained, and its beautiful murals becoming so grimy they were hardly recognizable. Once the demolition started, protesters began lining up with signs outside the station's entrance, but to no avail. The plot was developed into the Madison Square Garden, an ugly 1970s arena, and two Penn Plaza, an equally unattractive building behind it. The Penn Station was reduced to a grimy maze of tunnels and dimly lit corridors. At the time, Vincent Scully, an architecture enthusiast, describes the change as one entered the city like a god, one scuttles in now like a rat. Some of the Penn Station's original ornaments are still visible in the station, like its murals and stairways, acting as fleeting reminders of the wonder it used to be. You may be thinking that these sad losses of the architecture world were in vain, and they didn't make any impact on how architecture is treated today. Thankfully, this is far from the truth. Due to the destruction of these wonders, countless architectural icons as well as just everyday buildings were saved by the impact these two losses had on citizens. One perfect example of this is Grand Central Station, another architectural icon in New York, as well as another train station, which was proposed to be demolished in the 1960s to be replaced with another modern skyscraper. Luckily, the destruction of the Penn Station made people realize that all of this modernizing that was happening came with a cost to the city's heritage, and the New York Landmark Preservation Act was put in place to protect Grand Central and all other significant historical landmarks around the city. This act had ripple effects that spread all around the country and eventually to the rest of the world. Now what does this all mean for significant historic architecture? Well, the good news is that the Singer Building is still the tallest intentionally demolished building in the world, and will hopefully retain that record forever. On top of that, the preservation efforts in place today are infinitely better than they were back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and the effort to restore heritage buildings has greatly improved. In fact, some buildings down the street from me in my small town were recently restored to their original looks from before they were modernized in the 1960s. Here are some photos. Alright everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and comment if you have anything to say. See you in the next video!